Hey all you nerds, Gabe aka Fruppyart here and welcome back to our Gravity Falls and Cryptid inspired Pokemon region. In the previous episode, you traveled through an enchanted forest and climbed the tallest tree to get a lay of the land. At the top, you have found a neon lit plane crash? What the heck is this place? I don't know, man. It looks like someone crashed their plane and then decided to just stay here. But who would want to stay in such a colorful spot? Whoa! -ho -ho. Looks like we've got some visitors, babe. Yeah, it does. Tiny humans, what are you doing all the way out here? We could ask you the same question. Oh, where are our manners? I'm Skylar. And I'm Breeze. We just crashed into the Hoax region like a bunch of years ago. But we found that we just totally vibed with this area. All the Pokemon are so magical and awesome, so we decided to stay and kind of protect this place. Babe, we're like totally like guardians of the forest. Whoa, so noble. What are you protecting the forest from? Nothing usually. Though some lame squares and hoods did just come by trying to steal from us. They had their eye on this totally sick machine part we found the other day. Breeze pulls out a device component, this one marked with a propeller. Ah! It's another piece of the professor's machine! We gotta have it! Give it to us now! What my enthusiastic friend means is, may we have that pretty please? Sorry little ladies, but if we didn't just give it to those people in hoods, we can't just give it to you. What if we battle you for it? The Pines Twins against you two. You launch into a double battle with your sister against Breeze and Skylar. Maple is ready to rock with her new Squaddles, which is bulky with a lot of really helpful support moves. Your opponents have a number of very powerful Pokemon and work together extremely well as a team, so this is gonna be a tough fight. You have to deal with their flying types like Klepticep and Bitty Bat along with some bird-like Pokemon with unexpected typings like the Ghost-type Newmorn and the Rock and Fire Capnary. Their final two Pokemon are evolutions for little Atmosleek and Pupadupa. Breeze brings out Atmosleek's evolution. So before we were dealing with air rods or flying fish, photography artifacts of insects flying through frame that are misinterpreted as weird flying alien-ish things. Uh, we're going one step further here and pulling in the idea of atmospheric beasts. There are some people who believe that there are huge creatures that live high up in the clouds. That Some say that they are extraterrestrial in origin, which works well with this line being, you know, ultra beasts that have adapted to our dimension. Uh, but as you can see, we are doing a sky whale. Not nearly as big as Whale Lord, it's still going to be pretty gigantic. We're keeping some of the alien vibes by, you know, giving it four eyes. But I did want this to be nice and cuddly. I mean, you know, as cuddly as something that is mainly just cloud fluff and flippers can be. Oh, also, the shiny is pretty sick. Well, you'll see that in a second. Okay, let's say hello to Atmostratus. The High Flying Pokemon. This gargantuan flying type is still remarkably lightweight. Comprised primarily of wispy fluff, Atmostratus are able to soar about with ease and reach surprising speeds with their six wings. They live in the skies high above the Hoax region, but are exceedingly rare on the ground. Their origins remain a mystery. The ability is unburdened, so that raises its speed if it uses a held item. Again, it's so lightweight that that's going to help it a bunch. Uh, and the hidden ability is hydration. It is a cloud after all. It floats high overhead and is surprisingly nimble for its size. Next up, Skylar sends out the evolution for Pupa Dupa. All right, so this line was based off of the Dundas Blackfly and we just got the pupa stage last time. Now we get the actual fly. Now the Dundas black fly isn't really that much bigger than a normal fly, uh, especially compared to other cryptids, but this is Pokemon after all, so we're gonna make it pretty darn huge. 
Now, what makes its inspiration actually scary is that these flies are voracious and will swarm and devour anything. So, playing up that hunger, our great big fly gets not only a knife and fork, but also a cute little bib. It's pretty silly, but I dig it. Um, also, the eyes are like little reticles, so it can lock in on its target. Okay, let's go ahead and meet Gormandus, the eating Pokemon. This gigantic insect cannot stop eating. Getting it to focus on anything other than food takes a very skilled trainer. Once their eyes are focused on a scrap of food, it will stop at nothing to consume it. When they are particularly hungry, they have even been witnessed nibbling on their own trainers. The ability is Steel Worker, since it's got that knife and fork, and that increases the power of Steel-type moves by 50%. So basically another stab. That's pretty great. And the hidden ability is, well, I mean, it's hungry all the time. It's gluttony. Yeah. It's a big, hungry bug, but luckily, Breeze and Skylar's Pokemon aren't too tough, and you start to whittle away at them. Oh no, babe! We're like, totally losing to these kids! Let's do that thing, you know, that thing! Breeze clasps her hand over a small gem necklace. She glows and merges with Atmostratus. Okay, so shout out to my friend Bree, who voices Breeze in this episode. Bree is an actual real life pilot, so I couldn't resist the chance to give her her own plane. Getting stabbed with the water type moves that it already had, we get a small speedy plane that is flying and water type. By just rearranging the fins and fluff, it was super easy to make a plane complete with wispy propeller blades, and a floofy aviator scarf. Getting those clouds to trail really sells the speed, and you'll see when we get to the decks and ability that this bad girl is all about speed. Okay, let's check out Beast Merge Atmostratus, the Steam Jet. The gargantuan whale swallows their trainer when they merge and distorts into this extremely speedy aerial craft. Unlike a normal plane, Beast Merge Atmostratus is able to hover effortlessly in place due to its low weight. The tendrils of thick cloud both help propel the craft forward and can lash out and attack opponents. After unfusing, trainers cough up bits of cloud. Its ability is something new that we're calling Top Speed. So this thing is already super, super fast. Speed 142, that's, that's amazing. If Trick Room is in place, it gets priority on its attacking move. So basically, you will essentially never outspeed this Beast Merge. It, 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 because of those priority moves, yeah, it's, it's kind of bananas. Maybe it's broken. I don't know. I think it's fun. The plane hovers in place one second and then speeds around the battle the next. Next up, Skylar grabs his Beast Merge necklace and he and his Gormandus both glow. Okay. I will preface this by saying that I am a huge jerk. Skylar is voiced by my buddy Kyler, who one, is married to Bree in real life, and two, happens to be terrified of all insects. So for this beast merge, I am choosing to have him consumed by a swarm of insects. I mean, aren't I just the nicest person? Um, but this is going back to the fact that the Dundas Blackfly isn't dangerous because of its size, but instead because of the massive swarms of them that would overwhelm their target. And just for fun, I brought in one of my favorite one-off characters from Gravity Falls, the Hand Witch. Um, so yeah, we get a big hand. It's also very like Floor Master from the Zelda series, but yeah, Hand Witch, Hand Witch-like. Okay, um, let's examine the horror that is Beast Merge Gormandus. The Horde Hand. What was once a single large bug Pokemon explodes into a mass of tiny, writhing insects that completely overtake their trainer. It forms a hand which slowly stomps across the battlefield. Few trainers are brave enough to choose this fate, and after unfusing, the feeling of tiny insect feet crawling over your skin persists. The ability is Overwhelm, and that basically turns infestation into a bit of a healing move, so that's fun. 
Now, these two forms are pretty formidable on their own, but this couple works together super well. Gormandus uses follow me to draw in and negate any electric attacks that would, you know, easily fry Atmostratus, and they are free to then smash through your team. It's a tough fight, but you and Maple eventually take down this powerful pair, and they separate from their Pokemon. That was a gnarly battle, you two. I'm like totally impressed. Here you go. You've definitely earned this by kicking our butts big time. She hands over the device component, which Maple hugs and does a little dance with. You guys are welcome to chill and hang out with us as long as you'd like. It's pretty sweet up here. I don't know if you'd notice, but our house is like totally a plane. You hear your Rodom shift whir to life in your pocket. You pull it out and it scans your environment, then states, Rotom shift, analyzing data, beep, blorp, bloop, new function added, glider. It shares its code with the others and you watch as Cordelia pops hers open to reveal a hang glider. We would love to stay and hang out longer, but we've got to get back. This thing is part of a super secret and important experiment. And people are starting to go missing in town. We think that those hooded figures are up to no good. And plus, I'm hungry. Let's go already. Brenda wants to hang glide. Everyone else readies themselves to jump and sail back towards town. But you consult the journal's pages and scan your surroundings. Double checking the book, it seems that there is an area of interest labeled extraterrestrial craft nearby. You let the others know that you want to check it out and they glide away. I'm as free as a bird! You jump and start gliding south, but we'll pick up from there in the next episode. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you are enjoying this series. There is a new puzzle added to the Discord server, so check out the video description if you want to join all the journal deciphering fun. A huge thank you to our Patreon supporters, especially Angel, who is an absolute boss in the champion tier. Angel's, Angel's just the best. All right, I will catch you in the next one. Later, nerds. Later, nerds.